I'm here today with the NetGuardian 216 G3. This is a compact little RTU that you can put out at a remote site to get SNMP monitoring or log in via the web interface and check the levels of different sensors and alarms. So let's take a look at the front and back panels. So this is starting on the front. You have the designation NetGuardian 216 G3. You have a status LED, which is just basic status of the unit. The craft port, this is a DB9. Most of the newer models have gone to a USB port, but we will ship this with a USB to craft port cable. So if your laptop doesn't have a serial port, which most don't, you can use USB and be able to connect to it that way. This port is actually unnecessary if you really don't want to use it. You can go to the default IP address when you get the unit, set it all up, change the IP, you'll be ready to go. That's how most wireless routers and other type network devices do it exclusively. But we give you this option. There's some good debug in here. It's a text-based interface. So if you want to get in and do your initial configuration, it's a good way to do it via the craft board. The ACK button, which is short for acknowledge, will let you tell the unit, yes, I've heard you. Because if a new alarm comes in and you've set it up to do so, you're going to get a beep out of this speaker. And you can adjust the volume. So if you have a really loud site, turn it up. If it's, if it's uh, blasting away in a quieter site, you can turn it down. And then when you hear it, you hit acknowledge and it will silence that beep until you have something new come in and it needs to tell you about the next alarm. A couple more LEDs to give you some detailed status about alarms and other things that are happening. And then two fuse slots. And this is a dual power unit. You'll see the power ports on the back. And if you haven't used a GMT fuse before, they're pretty straightforward. They look a little bit weird and you do need to make sure you get them oriented correctly. But they just, turn that sideways, they just slide right in. And there you go, that's how you engage a fuse. So, pretty easy to do. Uh, a lot of people want to put them in sideways, so just be sure you uh, know how to put it in, but it only fits in one way, it's, it is keyed. So they're pretty easy. Then as we go to the back panel, you have a grounding lug, so you can attach it to your grounding system. And then an A to B input, you have little LEDs to let you know if you've wired it backwards, so there is some protection in this unit in case you get it wrong. This is a negative 48 build. You can also have plus 24 and some other voltage builds depending on the environment that you're in. And if you need to run an AC, we can just include a wall transformer that will convert to the DC voltage of the unit. This is the primary interface, and this is generally a serial port. And what would happen is when this comes off the factory, we put a sticker on there to tell you whether it's RS-232 or RS-485 or something else. And you can then use this to access a legacy piece of gear that maybe just has serial, doesn't have network. So that is handy. This is for a temperature probe. And we'll give you a sensor with a seven foot lead if you wanna uh, purchase the sensor to plug into this port. And it has just a stereo plug. It looks just like you'd have a pair of headphones. And that's just gonna go seven feet to any key area you want to go to. And then it'll track the temperature away from the unit a little bit. Some devices will have an ambient temperature sensor and that's good as a baseline, but it's not as specific as one that you can place somewhere. Then we have our analogs. These are analogs three and four, just because this 50 pin connector didn't have enough capacity to hold everything. So what this will have is 16 discretes, that's the 16 and the 216 name. You'll have two control relays, and there are some build options to have even more. So look at those if you need more control relay outputs. And then you'll have four analogs. The first two are gonna be on this 50 pin connector, and then the last two will be here on this separate connector. The Amphenol is common if you want to go to a 66 block or a wire wrap panel, which is a very common industry terminator. And we have a variety of options. If you prefer to have a wire wrap panel, put a little back panel behind this unit in your rack and you'll be good to go. Then last we have the LAN port. It's 10 base T. We don't need a lot of bandwidth. I mean, some of our devices will be 10 100, but the 10 is plenty. We're just sending SNMP traps or giving you our web interface. So there's not a need for a tremendous amount of bandwidth out of this device. So if you have any questions about RTUs in general, or you'd like to see more about the NetGuardian 216 G3, give us a call, 1-800-693-0351, or hop on the website at www.dpstele.com.